So what are we doing? I've got this really big battery that I need to fit into the back of the truck. Okay. Where do you want to put it? In the back of the truck. <laughs> <laughs> Trying to figure a really good way to mount it, to keep it out of the way, um, keep it dry, keep it secure, keep it accessible. Mm-hmm. Okay. Well, let's take a look at the back of the truck. What's this? So that's the Anderson connector. Okay. So what you can do is you can plug in here, or if you take these screws out, you can flip it out and flip it all the way around so you can have it coming from this side. Hey, that's pretty nice. So that's a, options. Yeah, that's a clever design to give you choices. Yes. Yeah, and here's your main voltage and your main 100 amp fuse. All right. You've been thinking about where you want to put the big battery, where you want to put it, somewhere in there? So this is the most logical spot. Yes. I was really hoping that I could suspend it from the ceiling because this is steel and it'll hold 400 pounds. And I thought if we could just suspend the battery, that'd be great. Um, but it's too long for the ribs in here. The battery is too long. The battery is too, about that much too long. Oh, uh, too bad. So the logical place is here. Um, yeah. It's in the very back. And I thought, well, how am I going to mount it? How am I going to protect it? So I got to looking at the, the packing material that it came with. Super thick, dense styrofoam or whatever it's called. Mm -hmm. It's very flexible. So I thought, why don't I use this for the housing to protect it? Yeah. Um, so basically what I'm going to do is just cut out this top section so I have access to the uh, main fuse mm -hmm. and to the indicator to show what the voltage is. Perfect. And then the, uh, the Anderson plug will come out here. I'll notch out here and then the Anderson plug will plug in here from the side. So then I have to secure it and I'm thinking, well, You've got these, I don't know what these little bits are called, quick, where you can strap a tie down or something. Uh -huh. well, that's kind of cheesy and it's kind of low. I really wanted multiple spots. And I got to thinking, well, there's these, these um, rivet kits. Uh -huh. I, I don't know what they're called. So you can drill a hole in the metal and you get this special device that crimps into it uh -huh. and it makes it a screwable mounting point. This okay. is exactly what they did here. Well, I've got these downstairs. I bought a whole kit off my Amazon with various sizes, M8, M10. So what I'm gonna do is, these ribs are hollow in the truck. Okay. This is in the olden days where you'd put a two by four in oh. your corners of your truck and then build up on it. Oh. So these are hollow. So I'm gonna mount three spots in here. You can get the uh, eye hooks, the really strong hooks mm -hmm. for the M8 or M10 size. Mm -hmm. And then I'm gonna just strap three of them across here. Okay. And there's no way this thing's gonna move. That's true. So this is just the first in a couple of um, multi-series for the uh, power in the truck bed. Mm -hmm. Step one, I gotta get some power in here. Step mm -hmm. two, I just received a big box from Renogy. And then step three is to have some AC power come out of this also. I'm gonna have a whole bunch of DC in here. I'm gonna put a DC fuse box. I'll record all that stuff. That'll be all separate videos, but it's gonna be really cool. Awesome. And what I've also been doing is I was concerned about heat. This thing will charge up to 149 degrees. Like, whoa, this gets hot. But I've been testing it because I've actually got some Bluetooth enabled thermometers in here and I've been keeping track of the temperature. It actually, because of this vent, it actually stays 20 degrees colder, cooler in the sun versus my cab. If the cab windows are all up and it's sealed up, it'll be 140 degrees in the cab, but in here it'll only be 120. Only. Well, while well, you're saying 100, but still it's within uh -huh. tolerance for that to be able to charge, discharge, and still work. That's right. So. This is going to work. I wanted to test it first and it's not going to get too hot. Cool. But I also have another idea for cooling this. Because remember, I'm going to have a power plant in here. Live all the time. I'm going to do all kinds of cool stuff. <laughs> but you got to wait and see. I can't wait. <laughs> so I wanted to show you the tool I'm talking about. It's called a rivet nut tool. I've seen these on Facebook. It was an impulse buy. I've been dying to find a reason to use this. I now have a reason. Because these, uh, like the M8s, here's the, the rivets, if you will, the same size <clears throat> as the ones that come with the smart cap. They have some M8 throughout the ceiling. So we use the same size as these with the tool here. 
and I've also seen some really strong eye hooks that screw right into these and then I'm going to run straps across all three of them and it's going to be super super secure. That's so clever. Let's see, so which ones are you going to use? M8s. M8s. So let's see, you guys can see those. But they've got little ones that are a quarter inch. I mean, it comes with a good variety pack. And of course, we'll put a link in the description if of you guys are interested. Absolutely. I can't wait to use it. I've been dying to use it. <laughs> and now I have a need. It justifies this by this. You're so funny. Thank you. So one other thing I'm going to do is, because um, I'm always concerned about heat. Heat is not good for batteries in general. Uh -huh. Even though I think we're going to be safe, I am going to cut, cut some ribs out of the backing of it because it doesn't have to be solid. It just needs to be firm against it right. uh, to create a space. So, you can get so I'm going to cut airflow. some ribs. I'm going to get some airflow in the back there. So I figured while well, I'm putting in these rivet nut things, I forget what they're called. Um, I thought I would put some in inside the uh, Smart Cap 2. Um, I've got some brackets, three on each side, and I thought I could put some more in those, and these could be mounting points for other equipment. So they're already drilled and ready to go. I figured if I have the equipment out, I'm going to do it all now and get it done. Um, but I like to be consistent to make the holes the same, so I created a little template. So then I just put the template over the, the metal bar, and I'm exactly the same on all six for the location because to me it looks cheesy when you look and you go, oh, one's up here, oh, this one's down here. I don't like cheesy. <laughs> so anyway, that's what I'm going to do before I get back to the battery. Okay, so the way this works is there's actually a video that the manufacturer puts out, which I watched. You can watch the same thing. One of the first things that, well, one of the most important things they don't tell you is pre drill the holes before you use one of these bits. Get a bit big enough to start it, that works much easier. So now, as you can see, it will go right in there. Nice, easy fit. Alrighty. So it's real easy. You just open this up all the way. You screw it in. You want to screw it in until you see the threads just starting. Right? Right there. It's right at the top. All right? It's really simple stuff. So you put it in the hole. You squeeze it together. You open it up. You turn this knob a little bit. You squeeze again. And you do it maybe one more time. that's done you can kind of kind of get a feel see like right there that's done so then you just pack it out this is rock solid it's now part of the frame so now uh, the reason I did it was because if I had some equipment in here or I could put a, another hook in this I could put some uh, bungee cords across I've got mounting points for various things now so all right so we got the battery in um, I've got the eye bolts in place. We showed you how do we put these in. I'll put these links on Amazon. They're stainless steel. Very, it's 304 steel, whatever that means. Um, I've got them in. I've got the the battery. It's from BigBattery.com. It's 138 amp hour. Um, it's got a 100 amp fuse. Um, I'm not too worried about it being back here because the operating temperature will go as high as 149 degrees. I've been doing a lot of testing inside this. I've got a thermometer over here. I've been keeping track of having this in the direct sun when it was 95 degrees out. It didn't get any hotter than, um, I think it was 102 maybe was the hottest. So this is going to be well within its operating temperature. So I'm not concerned about that. So then the next thing I'm concerned about is it moving around. So that's why I'm going to bolt it down and also why I'm using the packing material that came with it because it's very sturdy. Uh, styrofoam very sturdy so what I'm gonna do now is I'm gonna strap it in and I'll show you that and I'm gonna turn it on and I'm gonna monitor the temperature for a couple days with just it being on by itself make sure because I don't believe these things get hot but I won't take any chances and if it does stay at a cool temperature the next thing I might do is this was the other part of the packing material and I might just put this in here to completely enclose and protect the battery from rain, water, heat, something bumping up against it. 
Um, I have cut holes. Here's the 100 amp fuse. Here is the uh, voltage display. And then the uh, Anderson connector is over on the side here. So everything is exposed it needs to be and everything else is protected. So this is gonna end up being a two part uh, series of putting the battery in because the next thing I wanted to do was I wanted to test it. I wanted to plug in a 3000 watt uh, Renogy inverter. I wanted to run this baby down to see how hot it got because I'm all about safety and I don't want everything to get too hot. But I realized when the battery was shipped, it's only 13.1 uh, volts. So I need to charge it. Well, how am I gonna charge it? Well, in the end state, I'm gonna charge it with solar panels. And that's another video. But until then, uh, my option is I'm going to plug this new battery that needs to be charged into my RV. And you can say, how am I gonna do that? Well, if you've seen other videos when I installed a lithium big battery, it's the same brand that's in here, but just a different version. Um, I use Anderson connectors because they're universal, they're interchangeable. So what I will end up doing is, is building a cable long enough to go from the back of this battery to plug in to the back of my RV and let the RV converter charge it up. And then I'll be ready to test. So it's not gonna end the way I wanted it to. I was hoping it was gonna be done today because it's 90 degrees out and I'm done myself. Anyway, I hope you guys like this video. Um, it's been a lot of fun for me. I gotta do the disclaimer because people out there are gonna say, oh my God, you're crazy for doing this. I probably am and that's okay. And you are too, but that's okay. Anyway, you do this stuff at your own risk. Don't say, don't, don't do what I did and say, well, he said to do it this way and it worked. It may not work. After the testing, I might find out that this isn't gonna work, but I'm willing to try. Anyway, if you like the video, do the thumbs up and ring the bell thing. And we hope you guys subscribe because we have just recently reached a thousand subscribers. So we're pretty happy about that. Well, it took us two years. Hey, who cares, right? We're just having fun. Anyway, thanks for being our guest. Bye everyone.